Welcome to Tower Talk Business Radio, where we bring you conversations with the top business minds on Long Island and around the nation every week. Featuring expert consultants and small business owners who have found success, but are also willing to share their top tips, failures, and give gritty, matter-of-fact advice based on their firsthand experience. Now, let's Let's get get down down to business business on Tower Tower Talk Talk Business Business Radio Radio, on on the the voice of Nassau Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Hello and welcome to Tower Talk Business Radio. My name is Ray Schwetz, AVP of Business Banking at Jovia Financial Credit Union. We're focused on being the premier resource for business and entrepreneurship. We bring you weekly business advice, tips, tools, and services that help you grow your business. Plus, we interview the top business leaders and community leaders in the industry. So I'm very excited today to introduce you to uh, our guest, Matthew Mullen. He's the owner and creator of Empire Adventure Park. Now, they're located on the second floor of the Samania Mall, formerly known as The Source, uh, on Old Country Road in Westbury. Empire Adventure Park features trampolines, laser tag, a ninja obstacle course, augmented and virtual reality games, esports, and a toddler area, and, and a lot more. So we're very excited. It's great stuff. It took the kids there, and they loved it. Uh, welcome to the show, Matthew. Thank you, Ray. Thrilled to be here. Yeah, I, I appreciate you being on to talk about Empire Adventure Park. Congratulations on the opening. What made you decide to kind of get into uh, this type of business, an adventure park, something indoor, lots of kids running around? I was looking for something that was had a positive impact on the community that I live in. Mm-hmm. And I was up in Rochester one weekend, saw this absolutely spectacular park. It was 50,000 square feet, great lines of sight. It was trampolines and different obstacles within there. And I thought this would be great to bring to Long Island and it would be something that would be a very positive impact on our area, especially on the Simonia Mall where nothing was happening. Yeah, it's like a a ghost town over there for a little while. So it was really wonderful to see something uh, vibrant and new come up. And you're right. This is something that's a bit of a different experience. It's not like, you know, there's a lot of good museums like the Long Island Children's Museum that offer experiences for for kids. But this was something very much like a different type of activity. I'm sure, though, family and friends were probably looking at you like, well, why are you doing this type of business? Uh, What are you thinking about when you're doing this type of business? Uh, Friends and family must have been like, you know, that's... uh, kind of an insurance nightmare. There's a lot of uh, trampolines. There's a lot of things going on. You have kids, you have VR. You, what were their reactions when you proposed to them that you were opening up adventure, well, uh, an adventure park? It's, it's funny that you say insurance. My uh-huh. prior industry was insurance and I owned agencies out in Brooklyn. And you still went out and did it. And I still went out and did this. <laughs> yes. I, I was looking that what really interests me about this particular industry mm-hmm. was that you could not you, you, it wasn't a commodity. It wasn't something that you could buy just online and have delivered to your house. It wasn't something that you can call an 800 number and have it just uh, appear in your mailbox type of thing. So you would have to show up. You would have to uh, participate and be part of it. Mm-hmm. And so that's something that really drew me to something within this economy because within these malls, the retail is simply withering away. There's only a limited amount of retailers that you need within an area mm-hmm. and the amount of retail is totally saturated right now and the insurance industry well it's become a commodity you know especially on the personal line side so this type of industry really made a big difference to me that I found something that I could create and was a positive impact within my community yeah and this is something I do think that especially kind of post pandemic People are looking for something that's experiential. All of us have gotten used to getting commoditized items uh, via Timu or Amazon um, retail. It's unless it's something experiential about it, folks are you know less driven to a uh, retail space to experience that there. But what you're offering is definitely something a little different. It's it's creating memories. It's working with your kids. It's doing something fun with your kids, and it's letting them experience something that's unique. Definitely so. Yeah. Now, what was the process like uh, getting into this? And, again, you coming from the insurance background. So how did you get started making that shift into opening this type of business and then going through that process? Well, it really was that Columbus Day weekend up in Rochester where okay. I had seen the other park. And I thought it was 
really a great business model. I thought it was something that would work well. I reached out to people within the industry, and I ended up at this spectacular show down in Orlando called IAPA, International Amusement Parks and Attractions Association. And it's six miles of nothing but amusement parks, attractions, video arcade games, and you could get a roller coaster if you wanted to. They were buy an wow. entire water park and have someone come and construct it for you. <laughs> and it really got the creative juices flowing, let's say. Yeah. Because when I saw that original park, it it had trampolines, it had a couple of different foam pits and that type of stuff, but it didn't have all the you know, really interesting augmented reality games that I saw, the mixed reality games and the virtual reality things that I could offer people. And these were games that were video, that were sparkly, spectacular, and you had to stay active and participate in them just like the other games that I loved. Yeah. So these were the things, the attractions that really spoke to me and helped develop the vision of what became the Empire Adventure Park. And I also love that aspect of things because I've seen it on summer vacation. The kids are sitting on the couch on their phones. They're together, but they're on their phones. <laughs> I'm going, get outside. It's beautiful out. If it's raining, they just have the excuse to just stay on board. But you know, here you're harnessing the technology to do something different. Definitely so. Yeah. So it's a it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of fun. Now, tell us about what someone can experience when they walk through that door. Take us through what folks can expect, what families can expect. Well, one of the things I really love when you first walk through the door mm -hmm. is you can walk through 15 minutes early or 15 minutes late, and you don't have one of the paper bracelets that you would have from other parks. We have this very fun system. It's a LED bracelet that's RFID enabled as well. And so I know kids are always on time uh, and probably wouldn't have you leave 15 <laughs> minutes late because they forgot to do X, Y, and Z and never brush their teeth type of thing. <laughs> but, you know, once if that ever does happen, you know, now you can walk in 15 minutes late and when they activate your bracelet, you're still going to get that full two-hour period or 90 minutes or 60 minutes, whatever you paid for. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get just what that bracelet says you're going to get, like, you know, until they announce your time's up. So that's something that I really like is, you know, parents can have that peace of mind that they're going to get what they pay for within there. But then as soon as you go in, you'll see the Valo jump in front of you. And that is a spectacular augmented reality game that you see yourself as the image on the screen as you interact with the interact with the game as you jump on the trampoline. And you can collect your video on all the Valo games too. So the Valo Arena, the Valo Jump, the Valo Climb, all of them you can see your video afterwards and have it sent out to you. And that's free from all the kiosks that we have within there. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, the the visual is really what I like within the park where you have, you know, very not like we can call it eye candy <laughs> yeah. of everything within there. So you stay active, you're moving, and the visual of these different attractions is spectacular, especially quantum space. That's a uh, mixed reality. So your image is interacting like an abstract art show on there. It's not a game, but mm -hmm. it's something where – you see the pops, the fizzes of the colors, like colors of uh, everything that you're uh, doing and your actions are mimicked on the screen by those colors and in, in an abstract way. Yeah, actually. Uh, so that was, um, I think, maybe the second or third as you're walking through, right? Mm -hmm. uh, as you, when you first walk in, my daughter and I were hopping up and down on that back and forth <laughs> and trying to make the biggest art. <laughs> yes. And I had the advantage, of course, being the bigger person. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're thrilled about that. We're the, this is the only one in the world like this. We have, we have it on trampolines and with the LED screen. So I know there's one other in the Philippines that has the uh, trampolines, but they don't have the LED screens like we have. It's a massive screen, too. It's 15 feet by 8 feet on the LED screen. So it is a really good size and is you know great color saturation on there. So you really get a great view when you're doing this. Yeah, it's a very innovative uh, approach to something that's been around for a long time because, you know, you've been to outdoor trampoline parks and you think, oh, I hear about, oh, this trampoline's there. I have a preconceived notion for what that is. Well, you can throw that out because <laughs> it, it's definitely uh, uh, just a different experience overall. And it's it's enhanced by the fact that it's appealing to your sight. It, you're, you're active at the same time. So you're enjoying that. You get competitive. You know, it's a little bit of everything. Definitely. So the gamification of different attractions within there, 
allows that competitive side to come through and you can have some fun competing against yourself or competing against your friends. It, it really is a good time with that. And yeah, I had preconceived notions about trampoline parks and before I had gotten into it, well, one was going to be all creaky yeah. uh, and it smelled like feet. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm glad to say that we are, we don't have creaky trampolines and it does not smell like feet within the place. So, you know, what are the, those are the type of things that we definitely wanted to avoid. Yeah. And I can say from going through the experience, it was uh, comfortable. It wasn't overly hot. It wasn't overly cold. It didn't smell like feet. It didn't smell <laughs> like an old gym. And actually, we got these really cool Empire Adventure Park socks. Ah, I love the socks. Yeah. yeah. They, we put them to the corporate colors, and even the grippy part on the bottom has the Empire logo on it, yes. which is a lot of fun. Yeah. Now, was there anything at all specific with those socks that for your park? Because I did notice... I had socks on, and they were like, no, no, you need these. Yes, they're for safety reasons. So when you get onto the trampolines with regular socks, you will slip on the uh, trampolines, and it's a safety hazard. So the reason why you have the grippy socks is for safety. Okay. And we make sure that everybody comes in has our socks because then we know that they are the proper ones for the trampolines. won't leave marks of residue on the trampolines like some other socks will. And so that's why we do require everybody to have our socks, safety and cleanliness. Cleanliness. Yeah. Yep, and both very important, so well thought. <laughs> yeah, we've gotten very good reviews on the cleanliness of the park. People absolutely love how clean we keep the place. So if someone isn't uh, working as a court monitor, then they are cleaning. You know, mm -hmm. if there's something that, you know, they, they have nothing to do, you're cleaning, you know, and it keeps the place really, really beautiful. You are listening to Tower Talk Business Radio. Our guest today is Matthew Mullen. He's the owner and creator of Empire Adventure Park. My name is Ray Schwetz on The Voice of Nash Community College, 90.3 WHPC. So I want to talk about Vallow. You mentioned Vallow before, and just so our listener understands Vallow, Vallow is a partner that you've utilized or a vendor that provides different interactive uh, games. Can you talk a little bit about that partnership, about what they offer you? Definitely. So Vallow is a company out of Finland, mm -hmm. and they have some really, cutting edge, really great cutting-edge technology. And so we purchased everything that they have. We have their Valo Jump, their Valo Arena, and Valo Climb. And they have two different types of games. One is an augmented reality, and the other one is mixed reality. The difference is augmented. You see your image on the screen, and your image is what is interacting with the different images on the screen. And so, of course, your movements, the sensors pick it up, and that's what you see happening. So that would be the Valo Arena and the Valo Jump. And then the mixed reality is where you interact with the digital images on the screen. That's mixed. And that would be the Valo Climb. And their technology is so good. They actually won at the IAP of the Brass Ring Award for the best new item with the Valo Arena three years ago uh, when that first came out. So when I went down to IAP and I saw all three of them, I bought all of them on the spot and uh, was very thrilled to get them all shipped up to me from the uh, show in Orlando. Wow. Yeah. Uh, that's And good use of that space because uh, it, it is something that you, you still require the physical space, but just that, that virtual experience that it provides is very unique, very innovative. Thank you. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about the laser tag uh, piece as well. So that was something that was a <laughs> lot of fun. Uh, can you tell us about the laser tag experience and why that may be different from some of the other laser tags that have been around for a very long time? We had a lot of fun in designing and thinking, well, we have to go back to where Empire comes from. So Empire is yes. Empire State. Mm -hmm. So our subway station and the St. Anne's Warehouse look at the outside. So if you're not familiar with Brooklyn, the St. Anne's Warehouse is a great location for concerts and so forth out there. And we took a little bit of artistic uh, license and put a subway station into the uh, St. Anne's Warehouse facade, mm -hmm. which doesn't really exist out there. And then took a lot of the uh, you know New York subway theme and drew it right into the uh, laser tag arena. Uh, so there are subway cars, different uh, station signs, and so forth within there. We put a 20-foot Statue of Liberty in the uh, center. So the lights and the pops, and there's a news helicopter up there. So if you hit that, it will start to uh, you know uh, hit it with the uh, laser. It is. Uh, then it will start to say things to you, and you hear the noises come out of it as well, and the lights start flashing. It's a uh, very fun New York themed laser tag arena with just brilliant, brilliant, you know, attractions within there. Yeah. And it was very futuristic feeling. You know, it was, it was, it was very 
I want to say like Escape from New York, but <laughs> not <laughs> because Escape from New York has like that dirty feel. No, this no. is futuristic as in like almost like Star Wars or something like more that. More futuristic than apocalyptic, you know, yes, anything exactly. like that. You know, I yeah. wanted to keep it on the more thing, everything more on the positive side. I didn't yes. want to uh, show any uh, type of like, let's say, uh, negative New York on there. No, no, it's definitely something that all the positive, you embraced all the positive things about New York and the history too, because uh, I'm a big King Kong fan. So <laughs> you had a, can you talk about him? There, there are a few King Kongs. King <laughs> yeah. Kong appears three times within the park, once on our Brooklyn Bridge mural wall behind the, behind the glide rail. Mm. And I really like the way that they brought up the, uh, you know, lights within the airbrushing on there on them too. Mm -hmm. And then within our esports arena, there's a massive King Kong mural on the wall too that Really, we we love the way that that came out, and then the massive King Kong that hangs off the Empire State Building on the wall, uh, right by the esports arena. That one is really a lot of fun. So we have the plane coming down, and like you know, uh, you know, that chasing my favorite King Kong there. But they're all great. <laughs> <laughs> the only uh, thing, you know, I know we're in the cradle cradle of aviation area. You know, unfortunately, I look up at that plane and realize it's a Spitfire with American insignia on there. <laughs> <laughs> certain things you like you know just like in a look and go like mm, that wasn't quite right <laughs> uh it still works and like you said it's um it's embracing just the positive nature of new york and keeping that alive for the kids and for families and and for the big kids like us that uh can still be there and have fun or is it children of all ages right exactly <laughs> yep i'm 54 and it definitely appealed to the <laughs> the kid and me. Now, can you talk about some of the misconceptions that you had kind of going into this business? I'm sure you were thinking, oh, wow, this is going to be a lot of fun. And I'm sure there were some misconceptions. And how did you kind of tackle that? The biggest misconception that I had was the staffing and uh -huh. the levels of staffing that we had. And so with the amount of attractions that we have within the park, there is a certain level of staffing that has to be done at all hours mm -hmm. and even when it's not very busy. So that's one thing that, you know, has been an eye opener to me that I can't have one person covering three attractions. No, I need these three people over this way or I need a certain amount of people in the check in and so forth. So we have to find ways of increasing traffic during different hours to make sure that we can pay for that staffing level through all hours of the day. Yeah. yeah that I was the, see. the biggest misconception that I had within there. That and uh place smelling like feet and uh creaky trampolines uh, the other two misconceptions <laughs> but that you turned around so we don't have to worry about that so that's good now what's your long-term goals with the business now that you have it established kids are coming families are going and they're having a great time how do you see this kind of evolving forward there's two different models that we see going forward we, we're looking to open more of these mm -hmm. along the way and right now it's at the point of looking at smaller uh, easier to run parks with less staff, uh, less risk, and ones that require a smaller footprint. So there's a lot of different smaller uh, commercial spaces that come up that could work. And so we're probably going to open the next one with a little smaller and then see how that works and model that out for a year or two. And that way, when we go to do the franchise or if we do the franchises along the way, We'll be able to give people options of whether you want the full-blown park or whether you want the smaller type parks. So something like a satellite experience to to what you're doing. Right. Some markets may not have the same amount of people as you do within the Westbury market. Sure. Westbury market is spectacular. If you're looking at close to 600,000 people within a 21-minute drive time at that mall. The spend for entertainment is so high above the national average within there, the median income within the area. Not all markets are going to be like that, right. which is why we are thinking about doing something smaller. So if you go to a smaller or mid-market type area, there is a model that will work for that area that you will not have to worry about generating tremendous, tremendous amounts of revenue just to pay for the rent and the uh, staffing, which are the two highest expenses. So when we model it out, we look at the rent being about 20 to 25% of the cost of what we have for our gross income over the year and the staffing 23 to 25% of our model too. And so that way, if I do franchise and do bring that forward, the smaller one, smaller uh, concept may speak better to a uh, smaller market. Now, when you're speaking about that smaller concept, 
is it focused on the specific experiences? For example, would you consider having a location that are you're seeing there's a lot of traffic for a certain age group and perhaps a smaller concentration of folks, but that maybe just laser tag would be really effective there um, or something like that? Is that how you're approaching it or, or different ways? I would definitely approach it to a middle school, uh-huh. uh, elementary to middle school type age group within the uh, smaller one and take attractions that go vertical. Uh, the ninja obstacle courses, the uh, adventure mazes, and different things that can go underneath it. So you could put a Valo Arena under one of these, or you could put the party rooms underneath these uh, types of attractions too. I'm really thinking about staying away from trampolines within those because of the amount of steel and space that they take up. Right. And that this way we can go to air tracks floors or go to the... Uh, what is it? The uh, inflatables, uh, you know, inflatable dodgeball courses or inflatable sweeper games or inflatable, inflatable. Op, uh, did I say obstacles? I did, didn't yes. I? <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> Repeated myself, you know. But, uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of different options out there that you can really work within a smaller space and keep it up to the age appropriate group. Yeah. Now, one of the things that I think is also interesting, going back to your Westbury location, you know, uh, what, what's going on now. So we have Dave and Buster's there. Mm-hmm. So you have kind of an anchor there. Was there any thought given to, oh, well, maybe I shouldn't open there because there's a Dave and Buster's there? What, what made you kind of look at that as something that was okay? Is it taking away from your business? Is it enhancing? Oh, the, Dave and Buster's is a great neighbor and definitely mm-hmm. enhances our business. It is one of the reasons why I really wanted to be there. That and the parking garage of that mall. Uh, oh, perfect. Yeah. That parking garage ends up with the... Uh, we're really busy on days that are super hot, on days that are rainy, days that are snow. And if you have a parking garage, it takes away a lot of that, you know, problems for people when they have to park. And, you know, they don't have to walk out to a car that's covered in snow or raining and get wet or the car is going to be baking hot by the time they get there. But that was one of the things that really drew us. But Dave and Buster's being there, yes, they are a great co-tenancy for us and definitely make a, a big difference in why we wanted to be there. It's a different offering. They're, they're more, uh, you know, they have bowling, they have pool tables, they have arcade games. Uh, we're more of the active entertainment where you are jumping, hopping, moving. You always go, go, go with everything you have within the park. And so it's a different offering altogether, but it complements each other very well. Yeah, and I think it does create a destination because y- you want to go there because, all right, well, we can do Empire for two hours do something very active, then, hey, we can go get something to eat at Dave & Buster's Mm -hmm. and then play some games afterwards. So you're making a a nice day out of it. Definitely. So Dave & Buster's has that, like, great bar area with that massive TV down there, too. And you could make a day of it, you know, within that mall. There's a lot of other places to go to. Golf X is within there. Let's Craft is uh, down the hallway. And Gravity Vault is coming in there soon, too. And that is going to be absolutely beautiful. I, I... uh, walked through with the uh, contractors and the owners the other day, and it's really coming out great. Now, what's Gravity Falls? How does that work? Oh, uh, climbing walls up to, I think it's 45 feet to the ceiling. I, I may be wrong in the height, but it really is high. Uh, and they took over the old food court, so that window that you looked out over the parking lot and into uh, oh. Westbury, it is a really great view as someone's climbing along that wall. And when you can see in from outside, too. They, it is really a great use of the space. Yeah. So... A lot of different experiences, uh, all innovative, all fun, uh, great destination spot. Definitely. So lifestyle is, you know, the way that this mall is going. Uh, so food and entertainment is, you know, definitely the way that it is. Like I said, retail is saturated. There's only a finite amount of retail that you really need within an area. And this will bring in a much better use for that space in our community. Now, from a business standpoint, how are you getting the news out about Empire Adventure Park and your offerings. How are you getting that out there to the folks who would want to come? Mainly we're going through an email list that we keep collecting emails from everybody and the MailChimp emails and so forth go out. Sure. Uh, a lot of social media, a lot of social media. So we have a uh, you know big presence on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok now too. Uh, that has been worked out very well. Google has been a very positive area for us to go. Uh, all the social media has been extremely popular for us to get people and drive them in. And there's no lack of people that have uh, influential websites or uh, influential uh, social media sites, let's say, that reach out and want to come in and create content. And the more content that they are able to create, 
the more traffic they get to their site, the more influence they have. And so it works well for both of us. Yeah. Well, I can see that makes a lot of sense. And actually the videos that you can get while you're going through your experience and sharing that, I guess that's the best way really for somebody to learn. Oh, definitely. Yeah, but when they get the videos from the Valo uh, games, yeah. of course, the Empire logo is on there. And when they, you know, it doesn't exist unless you uh, share it on Instagram so <laughs> or TikTok. And they put it out there and it'll have the Empire logo on there with it, too. So they know where uh, they can go to have the same experience. Now, are there any partners that might be on your wish list for who you would want to connect with uh, for Empire? Uh, right now, you know, the only wish list that I truly have is, uh, I, I have my eye on different attractions and swapping stuff out, you know, and oh, I okay. already see what I want to change and, uh, improve and, uh, bring different things in. So my eye is on a, uh, different, different part to make my adventure maze more of a, uh, game experience mm-hmm. where it's, uh, from a company called Rugged Interactive to bring in, uh, pieces that you can tag and so forth and compete against your friends. And I'm probably going to, I'm definitely going to replace my inflatable with an air tracks floor and some basketball hoops and uh, soccer nets in the very near future. So keep an eye at Empire Adventure Park and make sure you come back because the experience is going to evolve and change. Absolutely. We're, gonna, we're not going to be shy about like swapping out attractions and uh, bringing new things in. And so I know we'll only open a few months now, not two months at this point, and I'm already thinking about what we're going to take out and what we're going to change and improve. Now, where can folks find information about Empire Adventure Park and where to, you know, get tickets and, and, and to come and see you and experience what everything they have to offer? The best place is to go to our website, empireadventurepark.com, and all the information is on there, all the way down to the video directions about how to drive all the way up to the uh, second floor of the uh, parking garage and have the easiest entrance into where we go. That was a, a lot of fun. I got to shoot those with my daughter the other day. And I think they came out great. And so if anybody wants to uh, let me know <laughs> how they like those, I'd, I'd, I'd love to get some feedback on them. Well, thanks again for moving into that spot and creating such a wonderful, innovative, and playful experience for us. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Yep. And glad to have you on as a guest today. We want to thank our guest, Matthew Mullen, owner and creator of Empire Adventure Park. I also want to leave you with DB's philosophy. Children need the freedom and time to play. Play is not a luxury Play is a necessity. And that's Kay Redfield Jameson. We want to thank you for being with us. My name is Ray Schwetz. Along with Didisha Boston Hill, your co-host and producers, visit nccradio.org for more information. We're available on Odyssey, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, as a podcast on iTunes, Android Podcasts, and Spreaker. This has been Tower Talk Business Radio, powered by the voice of Nassimene College 90.3 WHBC.